last in the series of synthesis videos will be a three-part reaction where we will attempt to start with benzene and make from that the three isomers of hydroxy benzoic acid, two hydroxy benzoic acid, which we'll probably recognize as salicylic acid, common analgesic, often used uh, to convert that into aspirin by acetylating this position. Or three hydroxy benzoic acid. Hydroxybenzoic acid, meta hydroxybenzoic acid, para hydroxybenzoic acid. Can we figure out how to make all three of these compounds using standard aromatic chemistry? And you'll notice that all three of these compounds are phenols, <clears throat> and we don't know a whole bunch of different ways to make phenol. We know that we can make a phenol from amino benzene. By reacting that with potassium nitrite and aqueous HCl, and that water will actually act as a nucleophile to attack the sp2 hybridized carbocation, somewhat analogous to the Sandmeyer reaction. That's one way we can generate that. We also know that in many cases it's possible to generate a phenol using nucleophilic aromatic substitution, and that might work in this case because we have the benzoic acid group in the para position. We might be able to introduce that from a bromine. With an electron withdrawing group here in the para position, we might be able to do nucleophilic aromatic substitution simply with potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. We also know that it's possible to go from bromobenzene to aminobenzene using NaNH2 in liquid ammonia through the benzene intermediate. So the logical starting place for our synthesis is either going to be bromination or perhaps nitration, because we know that it would be possible to convert nitrobenzene into aminobenzene using one of those reduction methods, maybe solid iron and HCl, in this case, iron acting as the oxidizing, or sorry, as the reducing agent. So <clears throat> the challenge is how to put in a hydroxyl group, because there's no OH plus that we can use in as an electrophile in electrophilic aromatic substitution. We're probably going to put the hydroxide in first in this synthesis anyway, because we may remember that the Colby reaction allows you to introduce a CO2 group adjacent to a phenol using a relatively mild base. So working backwards from this one, I'm thinking Colby. From the phenol, using potassium carbonate, and then reacting the phenoxide salt with solid CO2. So that's going to be a fairly simple synthesis. We just have to make the phenol first. But we already know that we can make that phenol <coughs> by starting with benzene and reacting it with 
with HNO3, 71%, H2SO4, 98%, and mixture of concentrated acids. I will make nitrobenzene using iron and HCl. We can reduce that to generate NH2. Iron will be oxidized to iron-3 in the process of serving as a reducing agent. And then we can react this with sodium or potassium nitrite, NaNO2, aqueous HCl in the presence of water to generate the phenol. And then in our last step, we'll do the Colby reaction, which involves first treating this with potassium carbonate, K2CO3, and then reacting it with CO2, usually dry ice, CO2 solid, and then aqueous acid workup will give us salicylic acid directly. So that's a four-step synthesis. Nitrate, reduce, diazonium salt quenched with water to form the phenol, and then the Colby reaction. Alternatively, we could have gotten here in two steps by brominating Br2 at Br3. still a four-step synthesis. It still takes us two steps to get an NH2 group on a benzene ring. So we solved the problem of making 2-hydroxy. What about 3-hydroxy? And there we run into the problem that this is a meta director, which would be great if we had OH plus, but this is an ortho para director. So if we start with phenol, we're not going to be able to put a group in the meta position. So we're actually going to have to start having this group present. That's a meta director. This OH is going to have to have been something else, probably the NH2 group. We're probably still going to introduce that by diazotization from an amino group, but this time we're going to have to put this group in first. So we can react this with bromine, a PBR3 and BR2 to make propylbenzene. <coughs> when we were making that secondary alcohol, but this time, in the second step, we're going to react that to CO2 solid, followed by aqueous acid workup, to make benzoic acid. The carboxylic acid group is a deactivating meta director but nitration can be done on deactivated rings. So we can convert benzoic acid into meta-nitrobenzoic acid using standard nitration. Our next challenge now is to convert that NO2 group into an OH group.
And we can do that in the standard method the same way we did before by reducing the NO2 group. Carboxylic acid group is much less readily reduced than the NO2 group. So Clemenson reduction, zinc amalgam, and ACL will probably not reduce the carboxylic acid to the primary alcohol. The Clemenson reduction would reduce a ketone in this position, but the carboxylic acid is significantly less reactive towards reduction conditions than is a ketone. And now we can treat this with KNO2 and HCl and water to convert the NH2 group to the diazonium salt. So again, it's a multi-step synthesis. <clears throat> we wanted to put them all on board at the same time. That'd be BR3 and BR2. That'd be step one to make the bromine compound. And then we do our Grignard reaction, then G D ether. Followed by CO2 solid, aqueous acid workup. Third step, nitrate in the metaposition. Fourth step, reduce that. Fifth step, KNO2, HCl, and water through the diazonium salt to introduce the phenol. Benzoic acid, we need to recognize that this is a meta director. The phenol is going to have to be in there first so that it can act as an ortho para director. And like the first synthesis where we're making ortho dinitrobenzene, the hydroxy group is inductively electron withdrawing, which will deactivate the ortho positions relative to the para position and allow us to introduce a group in the para position selectively. So we're going to start the same way we started make the 2-hydroxy benzoic acid. We're going to start by converting this into either the bromide and from there So either way, we're going to start by getting aniline. And if you've seen a trend that many syntheses start with nitration and reduction to make aniline, that's because many syntheses start by nitration and reduction to make aniline. We'll now make that into the phenol by treating this with sodium or potassium nitride, HCl, and water. <clears throat> to make our phenol, which was the immediate precursor to the 2-hydroxy benzoic acid, or salicylic acid. So it's three steps to the phenol. What we'd like to do now is brominate here, 
which will happen quite readily. You don't actually, when you're bromidating phenol, even need a catalyst. Because the hydroxy group is such a strong activating group, sometimes, in fact, it's hard to stop at monobromination. But if we use one equivalent of bromine and we don't heat it too much, we can successfully put a bromine group on there. It looks like we are almost there. All we need to do is the same thing we did in three hydroxy benzoic acid synthesis, which is make a gritty reagent and then react it with solid CO2. The problem is we can't make a Grignard reagent in the presence of an acidic phenol. So we're going to have to protect the phenol. Just as we couldn't make a Grignard reagent when we were making the 1,3-diacetyl benzene by, uh, well, in the presence of the other acetyl group, because the acetyl group would have reacted with the Grignard reagent, the Grignard reagent would simply deprotonate that would end up putting hydrogen in place of that bromine and not what we want. So how do we protect a phenol? Instead of having a hydroxy group on there, an alcohol, in this case a phenol, what we're going to want is an ether. So we will protect this by treating it with a base and then iodomethane to do an SO2 reaction to turn this into the methyl ether. Generally, an AOH is a strong enough base because the pKa of the phenol is 10 versus the 15 for water. So in the first step, NaOH, and in the second step, CH3I, the phenoxide ion, will do a nice SF2 reaction. And we will have successfully protected that phenol. As a methyl ether. Steps four and five can in fact be done in the opposite order. You could protect the phenol first as the methyl ether and then do your bromination because the methoxy group is also a very strongly activating ortho para director. So I've chosen to bromidate first and then protect, but protecting first and then bromidating would work equally.